Hello everyone, um, this is a seminar um, business and investment migration to Australia and this is run by three of us. I will do a separate introduction uh, but um, the biggest pleasure of this event is that it is run together with the state of South Australia. Um, yeah, so we are we are very happy about that and we are happy about the attitude and support and the culture that we have in South Australia that um, helps so many people, both aspiring uh, businessmen and entrepreneurs and also skilled migrants to flourish. Excited to be here, excited to work as migration consultancy here in this state, perhaps the best um, state for migration uh, for for aspiring migrants in um, in the whole of Australia. Best conditions, best attitude. Okay, uh, I will now do an introduction of who is going to do this wonderful job uh, for you guys. Uh, so we have three speakers today. Um, as I announced, uh, two of them are from um, Aussies Group Adelaide office and uh, one is from a Migration SA. So Tejas Patel is a registered migration agent, is director of uh, Aussies uh, Migration Adelaide, is a member of Migration Institute of Australia and is a qualified education consultant. Um, and uh, then comes the humble me, uh, who is registered migration agent at Aussies Adelaide and also a PhD candidate at the University of Adelaide. When I have free time, uh, apart from work, I do research in Australian migration law. I'm uh, in my third year and if I don't quit any any time soon from excessive pressure, then I might be able soon to, to become a doctor of laws and so we'll have a new title and a longer description to possibly uh, be able to uh, hold the competition with Tejas. And we are delighted to have the third person um, today. Thank you for your support. Neha, Neha D1 is a business development consultant uh, dealing with international engagement uh, in skilled and business migration uh, department for innovation and skills of South Australia. We're so happy to have you. Um, yep, and so now, so now that you all um, know our brilliant, <clears throat> our brilliant speakers for today, uh, there is uh, a plan uh, for today. Um, I will start off with talking a little bit about the requirements of this visa that we that we are going to deal with, uh, and you know that. Or if you don't know, then um, you will now know that business visa is always a two-stage visa. So first you come here to invest and only then you jump onto permanent residence, right? Because the state, uh, before they give you permanent residence through business innovation and investment, they want to make sure that you've invested the money that you've connected yourself to, to South Australia, that you're developing an existing business or bought a new one. So first temporary residence, you've committed to the state, you've made the investment and then application for permanent residence. So temporary residence 188, I'm going to deal with it myself today. Um, then Tejas comes in, will tell you what are the requirements you have to meet to jump onto the permanent residence. And then most importantly, um, Neha will join with her presentation, telling us about state specific requirements. What, because you know, this is a federal um, country, we have the federal government, but we also have states. So whenever we speak about this visa, which is the 188A visa, Business and Innovation and Investment, you can't do it without the participation of the state. Federal government issues the visas, that's correct, but the state nominates people. That's what is important. And at the end of all that, obviously, we'll have a small uh, questions and answers session, um, yeah, which we're very much looking forward as long as to further communication um, and contact with prospective applicants. Okay, 
So uh, the 188 stream, okay? Um, the business and innovation stream needs not to be confused with the investment stream and the significant investment stream. So when we deal with the business and innovation stream, we mean that we're looking for people who do something in the real sector, okay? To be eligible for this program, you can be based anywhere uh, in the world and you want to transfer your business, uh, buy an existing business, uh, set up a new business in Australia. But as evidence of your past skills, you must be somewhere in the world producing goods, providing um, services rather than just investing and getting income. OK, so if you are into gold, stocks, shares, bonds, if you are into investment activity, that's not the right visa. That's then the 188B, which is not the subject of today's discussion. Today, we mostly focus on the 188A, that's you're in the real sector, producing goods, providing services, importing, exporting, selling different kinds of things. You are in the real sector. That's not, um, not exactly investment activity, but it's generating income through a real sector business. That's what we're dealing with today. Okay, let's look at the requirements. Now, to be able to be eligible for this visa, there is the um, assets requirements, the business and personal assets of the applicant or their partner. If single, then uh, of the applicant, if, if a partner, then applicants and partners, not other family members, obviously, assets can be considered. 125 million Australian dollars or equivalent in any other foreign currency. And these assets, the business and personal assets, can typically take the forms of ownership in a business, cash on deposit, stocks and bonds, real estate, gold or silver bullion, or other things if now if um you look at personal assets um some people have novel assets that may be considered um as personal assets for example cryptocurrencies or other assets but that's personal only yeah the business assets would typically involve ownership interests on a business in a business shares um cash other things okay so 125 business plus personal assets so not necessarily be locked up in the business can be also personal assets of you and your partner now you need to have an intention uh, to buy a business or or either to buy an established business um in in this particular case in south australia the south australia um taking part in our meeting today uh or um if if you can set up a new business by existing or set up a new and that business which you intend um, to do must be operating for the purpose of making profit through the provision of goods services other than the provision of rental property to the public and not be operating for the purpose of speculative or passive investment so I, let me give you an example. Uh, if you want, um, if you want to open a business, and what it does, for example, it just buys uh, crypto at a low and sells it at a high. That would be a speculative investment. Okay, um, so that that wouldn't work as a business you would be running in Australia. Uh, Neither would uh, a rental property work. So that's how I know um, um, in Europe, where, where I, for example, come from, uh, a lot of people uh, from Eastern Europe used to get residents um, in the European Union by buying a property in the Cyprus or in Spain or in Portugal. So they got relatively cheap entry into the market by just buying a property and renting it out. Now, that would not work. In Australia, the threshold in Australia is much higher than that. You would need a real business that is non-speculative. You can you can do 
rental property, but then you have to buy a hotel. You can't buy a, a house or a couple of houses, make money on that and gain residence, uh, residence through that. So the threshold in countries like Australia is very much higher. You cannot gain cheap, simple entry through procuring a, a property for basically your own needs, but then show that you're generating income from it. It wouldn't work unless it's a hotel. Okay, um, and um, we look at the point, points and age, you would be surprised, but investors also do a points test. I would say that's a much more lenient points test that skilled migrants do because you still can, you, you contribute money that skilled migrants uh, normally do not contribute. So um, you have better um, and easier um, uh, requirements uh, to meet the points test, but still there is a points test. And there is an um, age threshold of 55 years old for this visa. So the, the things that you can factor in are your age. Um, 55 is a limit, but the younger you are, the more points you can actually get. Language skills, you can either get them for vocational, that's 4.5 IELTS overall. Uh, pretty sure most of our applicants are high, much higher than that. To 10 points for proficient English, if you have um, seven um, IELTS 7 or equivalent, then your education level would matter uh, and um, <clears throat> can be a bachelor degree in any field, you get lower points. If it's a bachelor higher, say an MBA, um, Master of Business Administration or um, a bachelor's or master's in science or technology, you would get um, the higher range of the points for that because the, it is so, thought that STEM people and MBA people can possibly make more money. This is this is our philosophy in this program, I guess. Um, then business experience. Um, so how long you've actually had the experience of running a business or businesses uh, can um, give you five to ten points depending on the length of experience. Um, net value of business and personal assets. Now, I started this conversation by showing the requirement of 125. So 125 is a threshold. 125 of business and personal assets is a minimum that you should have, but you can have more. If you have more, you score better at the points test. For example, you would just get five points for 125 million, but when you go up 175, 225, 275, you score 15, 25 and 35 points respectively. So for someone potentially who would lose points uh, because of their age, who would lose points because of education level, for example, uh, they could regain points by having more business and personal assets. Uh, then the business turnover. Now, the, the minimum business turnover, business or businesses, you might be running several businesses now. So when we say business turnover is we take your existing business now, because for uh, the government to issue a visa to come to Australia, we need to somehow determine your eligibility. Now, we need to look at the businesses you're running now to see that you've managed to generate a certain turnover because that is an, an indicator of your possible um, success in the future once you come to Australia. So uh, the minimum we would be looking at um, as specified by the law is $705,000 um, in at least two years of the last four years. Okay, so if we take a period uh, from today and look into the past, we'll get four past years. And in these four, it's not necessary that your business existed for four years in this particular requirement, but you, out of these four years, when it existed, you must have generated at least 7,000, 750,000 um, K each of the two years in terms of business turnover. That increase came last July as the previous government decided to scale up the uh, the business program, looking at potentially wealthier and more successful candidates to uh, to contribute what they thought they could possibly contribute more than other candidates. 
Okay, now a thing very often overlooked and a thing that not many people have, but someone might have it. Uh, someone might have patents, registered designs, trademarks, um, joint ventures with someone, export trade, uh, turnover growth, not just um, a slow curve, but a rapid rise in your turnover, evidence of job creation, uh, commercialization grants and venture capital funding. All of that can give you up to 65 points, which is huge, okay? Uh, because um, supposedly people who have attracted funding and grants and uh, were to commercialize things, as we think would be, would be the strongest contributors to the economy, yeah, because we are back, as they say, Australia is back to making things, at least trying to go back to making things. So that's why we're so much um, uh, giving so many points to people who can commercialize research, commercialize idea, and did that in the past. If you don't have that, that's absolutely fine. You would still be able, uh, if you make your own calculation, you can ask us to make your calculation, but even if you make to, your own calculation, you will see that it's even if you don't have any of that, the patents, the designs, you would still be able to meet the 65 points requirement. As I say, this test is pretty lenient. Uh, and endorsement by the state, uh, certainly a thing which we'll talk about today in more detail is 10 points. And you need, you must have the endorsement by the state. It's not whether you choose or not to choose to have that endorsement. If you're not endorsed by a particular state, today South Australia is our um, much respected guest. If you don't, if you are not endorsed um, by South Australia for for the program, then it's impossible to get to the visa application stage. It's impossible to get this visa if there is no South Australian endorsement. So it's um, an important point, not just not just for getting the points on the test, but for getting into the program in principle. Okay, uh, so I, we move on. <clears throat> I will reiterate the business turnover requirement um, because that's important. You get points for um, the business turnover requirement, but it's also a minimum requirement. If you don't have the 750K um, for at least two in the four years, you are not eligible for the program. We've scaled it up. We're looking at possibly bigger and more successful individuals, bigger businesses, more successful individuals. Uh, several eligible businesses can be combined to meet the requirement where you have interest. And that particular requirement that we have looked at more generally, the endorsement by a state or territory, uh, the federal law tells us that the business project should include detail on the economic benefit that will be, be delivered to the South Australia economy. And the choice of the business can be based on the client's own preference. However, a business which is solely, that's by the way, South Australia, Neha, that's from the South Australian current version of, of things. A business which is solely uh, focused on selling imports, including bringing products into South Australia from overseas, will require substantial justification via the business plan to demonstrate the benefit to the state. So this is certainly, I'm not, I'm not, trying um, um, to do um, Neha's part of the job. I just uh, wanted to say that Neha will elaborate on that separately, but I think what South Australia uh, wants to do, if I understand this philosophy correctly, we don't want people just to be importing Im stuff to South Australia. We're pretty excited if they export stuff from South Australia, but not import stuff uh, to South Australia. That kind of business is not a no, but would require substantial justification why you as an applicant have just come with a business idea of just importing things here, not improving, not creating added value here, but just importing them here would be perhaps difficult to meet the requirements of the program. But now we'll talk <clears throat> about that in greater details. Um, now, the fees involved in the program is, is something you would always want to know. Um, so <clears throat> the IMI SA nomination fee is currently nine, um, 930 Australian dollars. Uh, we don't know what it's going to be like July inwards. I think we have uh, an inflation which has been over 7%. Uh, so we don't know, but we'll see. 
uh, the Department of Home Affairs fees are uh, five around five thousand for main applicant, around two thousand for their partner, and allow around one thousand three hundred for uh, a child if a child is under eighteen years old. Um, if the main applicant uh, does not have functional English, remember I said the main applicant can get points if they have functional English. I'll four point five. They get five points. Or if they have proficient English, if they have English <laughs> at level of IELTS 7, they get 10 points. Well, possibly, if you get points without your English score, you may not, you may even not know English for this program. That's fine. But then you pay 9,700 um, Australian dollars for no, not knowing English. Although, in practical terms, it would be perhaps difficult to to imagine a candidate who would be able to um, successfully adapt to the environment and create a successful business, possibly uh, not having English at functional level. That's not up to me to judge, though. Uh, if the main applicant uh, applicant spouse does not have functional English, she would be paying around five thousand dollars. And the credit card surcharge is one point four percent for all payments. Now, if you ask um, us uh, about our fees for the process, there, then I would say the range uh, would be between twenty and twenty-six thousand um, dollars. Look, um, it's it's very difficult to be very specific before we haven't seen the person in their case, because someone has currently one eligible business based on which you will be trying to prove South Australia or another state that you are eligible. Other people will have two or three eligible businesses, which is double or triple the amount of paperwork. Some people will have uh, business and cash. Other people will have gold, stocks, shares, bonds, other assets that are difficult to calculate. OK, uh, some people will have land. Some people will have um, property valuation. Some people will have smaller properties, smaller investments. The more work you want us to do to determine your eligibility, uh, the more we'll be charging you. So it's as simple as that. So whenever a particular case comes in, that's when we try to evaluate what, what the fee is going to be like in each particular case. And the fee obviously includes your supporting you through all stages of the process, whether it's uh, the nomination of South Australia, or meeting the points test, or completing the assets and liabilities form, uh, or completing the visa application form. Everything that is done is um, done with us. And of course, uh, appointments and uh, migration advice, whenever you need it, will not be charged for. So it's going to be part of that package. So we don't we don't sell the service of filling out applications. Uh, we, um, we, we sell the service of giving <clears throat> migration advice from the beginning to visa grant and possibly further because we want people to uh, uh, to have a good impression of ourselves even further and to become friends. Um, I will pass on the baton to uh, Tejas who will now say what happens next because everyone who's been who's met the requirements who's had their 188 granted we want to come here and would say well um, I've invested I've uh, what do I actually have to do tell me money or creating jobs or other requirements what do i have to do in order to get permanent residence and later possibly australian citizenship tejas patel will be able to tell you about this final stage of your business um, journey tejas thanks costia <coughs> hello everyone um, i'm also a registered migration agent here in aussies in adelaide um, so i'll be going through the triple eight visa which is the permanent visa obviously everyone will be applying for a uh, business visa to settle down themselves and the family and eventually wants to get a pr um, so once you have arrived to australia after getting the one double eight visa um, you'll be required to meet this uh, requirements to get a permanent visa um, in the permanent visa section as well, you need to have a state endorsement. So obviously you need to get a nomination from Immigration South Australia in order to apply for this visa. Um, normally you can only apply for this visa now um, after three years on uh, staying on the 188 visa. So before uh, 31st of July last year, the requirement was only two years, but now after that we have changed the requirement to three years. So now you must be um, holding this visa 188 for three years before you can apply for the 888 visa. 
um, and also you must have been physically in Australia, um, settled down and your residency must be a principal resident in South Australia for at least one year out of three years. So the Immigration South Australia can nominate you for uh, the permanent visa. Um, in part of the business side, you obviously have to have a business interest, uh, which is basically for two years out of three years, you must have managed and run a successful business and you need to provide the documents to show that um, that you have invested um, in the business, you have managed to run the business for next two years and that's why you should be nominated for your permanent visa. You also need to require, you also would have to invest into an assets as well. So you need to invest at least $200,000 in the business or personal assets. And also you need to hold that asset for at least um, more than 12 months. And you, before you can apply for the PR as in triple eight, you need to meet that 12 months of minimum waiting period as well. Um, in the period of 12 months, obviously you need to provide the uh, period of two years, the business was ho holding, um, you were doing the business. You need to have at least two full-time Australian employees in the business as well. So those employees can be an Australian permanent resident or citizen or eligible New Zealand citizen as well. Uh, when I say full-time, they need to be working at least 30 hours or more to be considered as a full-time employees um, in order to apply for the, the triple eight visa. Um, sorry, yeah. Um, the minimum investment requirement or the assets requirement is 600,000, but keep in mind this can be changed or immigration essay can nominate uh, individual applicants case to case basis. So they do have uh, flexibility to make some exemptions in some of the requirements, depending on where you have invested uh, in the business, where, where, where you have settled down uh, yourself, as in your in business investment and your job creation. So if you go um, towards the regional area, obviously you'll get more priorities. There are more exemptions in the regional South Australia, but the minimum requirement for the business or personal assets or the period of one double eight visa is 600,000 um, for the period of 12 months before you apply for the triple eight visa. Um, that includes that $200,000, which we have invested into business assets. Um, so 600,000, um, that includes house, and business as well. So if you invest, let's say, 200,000 in your business, and then you can invest the rest in a personal asset as well. In order to also meet the triple eight requirements, you would require to have the business to do certain turnover, which is $300,000. So it's not a lot, but then uh, it depends where you've invested your business in. So if you have invested into regional South Australia, then you might require uh, to meet lower requirements uh, for the triple eight visa but then three hundred thousand dollars turnover is required for at least 12 months before you can apply for your next visa which is triple eight um so that's the minimum requirement as mentioned on the slides is basically um depends where you have invested it it has to be an exceptional value to the state in in regards to um, if you want to get any exemption in case to case basis. So let's say if you have invested into regional uh, smaller towns in South Australia, then immigration essay can make an exception in terms of meeting these requirements. So you need to have at least $300,000 turnover and you need to meet at least two out of three requirements. Um, $200,000 in assets, $600,000 in personal and business assets and two full time employees. But Neha will elaborate as well that the immigration essay can do um, an exemption in, in this uh, nomination requirements case to case basis. It can be age, it can be location, it can be exceptional value to the state, what business you do as well. So keep in mind, guys, the business visa is very flexible visa where certain requirements can be discussed with the Immigration South Australia. And as long as your business plan makes an impact to the economy, um, they do have that flexibility in terms of working with you um, in regards to age, in regards to the business requ uh, investment requirements and all those kind of thing as well. Um, uh, that on the slide is mainly the contact details of us, um, myself and Kostya. If you have any questions, um, you can maybe uh, take a screenshot or a photo. You can contact later on as well. Uh, but the next, I will get Neha to discuss, uh, discuss about the immigration essay requirements from South Australia uh, department point of view, what they're expecting, what is the current requirement and all those kind of things as well. But then again, uh, I think I'm expecting some changes from next month as well. So I'm sure we'll, we'll come up with another session where we'll cover up uh, some of the future requirements in the uh, in the near future as well. And just before Neha starts, before you go, there is a slide which is before you go, uh, before we go on to Neha's story, um, I just wonder if we could see um, the our last slide. Yeah, sure. Um, no, the the, uh, the and after this one. Yes, thank you very much. 
Um, beautiful. Uh, so we before we pass on the baton to Neha, um, uh, we just want uh, to make a, a quick announcement um, that we are going to talk about other types of visas next time in our next meeting. Uh, so please join us about the 188B and 188C. Now, this is what I started this discussion from. Today, we talk about businesses in the real sector. And that's why the requirements for investment are lower, because you create jobs, you hire Australians, you create a benefit to the state, the, you, you, you bring commercialization, sometimes you bring technology, sometimes you bring something else. So lower capital requirements. But we also have the high capital requirements. We have the 188B where you have to invest 2.5 million, but we don't require you to do anything. You buy uh, into private equity funds here in Australia. Uh, but we would want to see that you have prior uh, investment um, and expertise or business experience. And for 188C, where the requirement is 5 million investment, uh, we even don't want to see your prior investment experience. You might have just inherited the funds from um, a late family member. Okay, or have been given funds as a, as a present if you were particularly successful. So basically, there are other programs which are investor programs. But today, but today, going back to today, we're in the topic of the real sector businesses that contribute to our economy. So um, uh, investor programs, pure investment to investment focused programs where you don't have to create a real business in South Australia. We'll talk about them next time. So that was an announcement. And now Neha, welcome. We go back to the real sector and go back to the requirements that the person has to meet in order for you to say, yes, you're endorsed by the state, you can get this visa. Absolutely. Thank you, Tejas and Kostya, for um, having us in our session today. Um, and uh, you've covered most of the content which I wanted to talk about, but there are certain things which I think probably I want to provide a bit of assurance to your clients that uh, they are in the right hands and you both of you are experts and going forward if they want to process their applications through you you guys have a long history of you know doing applications and supporting a lot of clients so if you guys want i can uh, i have put up a couple of slides which i would like to show so if that's okay i will just share uh, my screen with you all yeah sure. Sure. thank you Can you all see the screen now? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so um, I'll start for, from the beginning, uh, like Costa and uh, Tejas already introduced me. So um, I work for the state government here and we are based out of Adelaide. Uh, so the name of our organization is Skill and Business Migration. So um, like what what uh, you know we've been told earlier that we don't grant visas we provide sponsorship so without sponsorship you cannot have a visa grant so uh, as per the system here the visa process you need to have a sponsorship from a state government body so uh, in case of south australia it is us who provides a sponsorship so um, so, of course, today uh, we uh, are talking about business migration um, and I'm sure as a client you have a lot of, uh, you know, other destinations, but why South Australia uh, is an attractive destination for many of our business clients is because we provide a very flexible environment for them not to just do a business, but also to run, to have a family or to add to the local businesses and the state's economy uh, as, as as a state we have a very strong connection to national and global markets so let's say if in the future you are planning to invest in south australia or you are looking to start your business in south australia you will get um a very good platform platform where you can expand uh, your business and get a support from the government as well. Um, and as, as a state, there are uh, certain objectives and there are priorities, which is, of course, mentioned on the slide, which is attract high quality investment into the South Australian economy, 
increase employment and drive innovation to make south australia more productive and competitive so so other than uh, uh, achieving these objectives there are other things which which a government or our department can also provide you when you when you look for uh, visa opportunities over here uh, so we talked about um, uh, visa pathways um, and uh, so as a state we run this program and the main feature of these program is that it provides a pathway to to permanent residency uh, no skill assessment required and there are a lot of waivers available for English and even in fact for the age as well. But like again we mentioned in the beginning, uh, we will look at all these criteria, all at these waivers case by case basis. Um, so um, subclass 188 which is business innovation and investment provisional visa. So. Uh, this provisional visa is valid for five years and you become eligible for a PR which is subclass triple uh, eight after three years and once you have that PR then of course uh, depends on your points and your background you will be eligible for a citizenship down the line. Um, so um, like how Costa mentioned in the beginning uh, today we are focusing on business innovation stream but apart from that we also run investor significant investor and entrepreneur uh, entrepreneur stream uh, from south australia government's perspective uh, business innovation and investor is one of our most popular um, uh, streams and we provide a lot of nominations uh, for our uh, for our business clients um, we've since we've already talked about uh, the requirement for this uh, first visa subclass i just thought i will give you a basic state nomination requirement like when you submit an application what do we look at and how do we make sure that you are a suitable client for us uh, so of course uh, through your application we assess the intention to live and undertake investment or business activities in south australia and of course the sustainability also that how serious you are to live and add to south australian economy down the line um, and um, what is your you know investment or activity uh, you know what what how does it look like how does it adds benefit to the state requirements um, and of course the third and a very important point is provide detailed information on the viability and economic impact um, which I don't think is very um, uh, difficult to prove because like how um, Tejas and Costa talked about the financial requirements, it's pre pretty much easy to elaborate and explain that this is your uh, intentions are to start your business in South Australia. Uh, just I just want to touch upon on a very uh, on these things very, very quickly. So like we already talked that for this visa stream, um, the investment into a business and two full time employees. Um, if a person is under the age of 55, then you need to like initial investment is about three hundred thousand dollars. But if someone who is over 55, then it is about six hundred thousand dollars. If you are looking into property development, then um, the details are mentioned on the website. So if it is within Adelaide, then it is 1.5 million. But it is if it is in regional South Australia, then it will be around 1 to 1.2 million. And for people who are over the age of 55, they have, of course, to invest a little extra amount um, for both the regions. If there is any export, um, like how Costa emphasized on it, if you are looking to move here and you want to start imports, we will probably ask for a lot of uh, justification that how is he going to add value to South Australia. So we usually do not encourage people to enter into those kind of businesses. But of course, if it is about export, then uh, this is the minimum uh, financial requirement that we look at. Um, other than this, I think um, what we also suggest to many clients is uh, whenever, let's say you want to buy a business over here, just take a financial, you know, a legal help from someone from a professional. And I think Aussie's group can connect you with someone because they can 
they can read their balance sheets if the businesses are in any debt or not so these kind of my new details which we usually uh, suggest our clients to look at um other than that um uh, we work with other government uh, bodies as well so if in case you are looking for any other support in terms of any funding opportunities not initially but once you are there you have the visa you are running your visa then the government departments can also support you on those fronts as well uh application process uh you don't have to worry about because Aussie's group will help you with the whole process so uh but just i thought i'll put a slide over here uh step one is of course skill select uh through expression of interest then the state nomination uh which we would take probably 12 to 16 weeks and then next is the visa application uh process um, so once you have all your documentation, you can begin with your um, application process for nomination. Um, since we are not talking about investor or other sort of uh, slides, um, um, I don't know if you guys really want to me want me to talk about. I'm happy to do that. Otherwise, we can leave that for later, and I can quickly talk about a couple of other things if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's better to cover up the other other points as well. Yeah. Okay. So should I just leave this one here? Yeah. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. okay. We we will certainly do a, one more program with yes. uh, with the with the investor options. Just to absolutely. focus people's attention that today it's more on the real sector. Yes, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Happy to do that and like how you guys mentioned in the beginning as well, uh, there will be few changes coming up. Uh, the applications for the last financial year is closed already. So once we will have more information, we can set up another time and talk about other uh, streams as well. Um, but other than that, I think just quick things is um, uh, that, uh, you know, when it comes on businesses um, that uh, South Australia as a as a state will manage the demand level of certain businesses. It is purely up to a client to select what business do they want to get into, but um, whether they want to invest or maybe, you know, buy cafes or restaurants or convenience stores or service stations or any retail stores. Um, it is not restricted to anything, but again, as a department, we have a bit of responsibility to make sure that we also uh, fill the gap uh, in some areas where we have a shortage and we can have international people to fill uh, that gap for us. Um, but other than that, I think there is um, you both of you have covered most of the things which we wanted to talk about. So I think um, just a last thing, uh, which is about points, which Costa you talked about. So we are little flexible in terms of points as well. So let's say if any client has 55 or 60 points, but the minimum is 65, we can still provide a bit of flexibility over there. But again, it comes, it, it, it depends on case by case basis. And we would like to see the investment proposal, which a client is looking to undertake. So, but if it, if it is very, very attractive, then we might provide a bit of extra points and provide a bit of waivers on those front as well. So, so yeah. So yeah, that's it. That's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Nia. I think the yeah. before we take on any questions or anything, uh, the other couple of points uh, which were, we really wanted to touch on was the can the applicant invest into property, which you already covered as well, because a lot of people coming from offshore yes. would be interested if they can do a, a property development business and still get yes. a visa which you covered up as well that one yes. requirement is 1.5 million and, yes. uh, and if they can invest into regional it will be 1.2 million yes absolutely yeah. um yeah great and the sec second thing is also um obviously other states have the priority sectors that they really want the business investment into certain sectors as well which you already yes. covered as well that there is yeah. no minimum requirement we're looking at um as long as the business makes sense and it creates yes. government we are fine with it yes uh, but certain industries such as creative industry or mm. you know advanced manufacturing will be more uh, encouraged that you mm. eat to those areas that would be yep. great yep. Um, and third thing is obviously the regional investments would be much appreciated as well absolutely yeah yeah and i guess one of the key takeaways for, for for a lot of clients for today would be that 
Yes, you need a 125 initially of business and personal assets, but uh, then there is no requirement for the 125 to be transferred. They must be transferable, as the law says, but not transfer. Just to clear, it's 1.25, right? So it's it's one million and two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, and it's it's for some of the businesses not a big amount. It's just that obviously they need to put in through the paperwork and stuff, um, and then um, the the biggest plus point I would say in the the business migration programs for Australia is that the investment requirement would be post the visa grant. So there is no minimum requirement you have to invest before the visa is granted so you're not investing or risking uh, risking any of your capital or any of your uh, financials you're paying the immigration fees you're paying the agency fees but then your investment requirement kicks in once you have the visa you arrived in australia and that's when we we can assist you with um, certain requirements if you want assistance with the business uh, identification as well or you need an assistant in terms of setting up the business structure we can put you through the accountants or financial advisors as well so post business grant services will be there so that's one of the very good point about the business migration for australia as well yeah i just want to add one more thing uh, so we work with uh, satc which is south australia tourism commission Yep. And uh, they also provide us a list of businesses that are available for sale. So um, we also have a list, um, a very small example, a lot of our Southeast Asian clients or Chinese clients, they come and buy wineries. So we have list of such businesses if there is a hotel or cafe or restaurant which are up for sale. So we also can provide a list uh, once you have a visa approval that uh, you know, depends on what you are looking at. So, so yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So that that just shows that obviously post visa grant will get those kind of supports from us as an um, you know migration agent, but also from the um, the Department of uh, Immigration South Australia as well. So um, there will be a, a lot of ongoing supports for you to establish yourself and your business and your family, and then we can walk through the permanent step of the permanent visa as well after three years. Yeah. But again, um, uh, getting back to the 125, why I was talking about the word 125 is that it's transferable, but not to be transferred. Yes. So you might, up, might end up being very flexible with what you end up doing, especially with South Australia being able to waive some of the requirements. Okay, so 125 is what you show, but if you achieve 300,000 turnover, for example, then you can do two of the four requirements, 200,000 of, of, uh, of uh, personal assets or two full-time Australian employees or 600,000 business and personal assets. So it, it's, it's all uh, that, you know, the maximum you spend is 600,000. You don't spend 1.25 mils. So that's important because um, for a lot of people, what they have is not what they want to spend. These are different things. So here, your spending would be limited to 600. Yeah, absolutely. So I, personally, I would recommend they, they can achieve uh, the whole the program with three hundred thousand dollars investment as well. You know, so they they're very flexible, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they can invest into a business, run the business successfully, create two employments full time equivalent, and I'm sure they will be me they will be meeting the requirements for the triple eight visa, which means even if you have to show that one point twenty five million dollars to get the visa, but then you don't need to transfer the whole amount here. You just need to invest minimum three hundred thousand dollars, do the business, settle down yourself, establish SA as your primary residence. And then you, there you go. You meet the requirements and you apply for your triple eight visa. Yeah. So that's basically why this program is so attractive, that it's suitable for a range of people. And if possibly you have slightly less money, but a lot of that you would like to transfer here, but a lot of talent, flexibility, wisdom, etc., business skills, connections in, in Australia, possibly. Um, that you have through family, friends, uh, or, or whoever lives here, then um, you might get a relatively cheap residence. Well, nothing is cheap if you have to do a lot of your work and donate your time and effort to it, but seems like uh, seems like an attractive offer. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a very good program and um, I'm sure um, there will be a lot of people offshore who will be interested. But we'll be open to have any questions if anyone um, have any questions. Um, other than that, I think uh, we have covered up uh, quite a few things, but we'll be covering up the 188B and 188C later on as well. Because there is a good interest in 188C uh, from offshore as well, even though the higher investment requirement, but because a lot of people might have money, but they don't have the, the proven business documentations and stuff as well. So we'll cover up those two business visas um, stream in, in future sessions. I think we are all sorted. Everyone understood everything. Hi, I just have a question if I may ask, please. Yeah, sure. Um, so you mentioned the requirement you can bring your children as well on the 188 visa. Any particular age uh, selection on what kind of age can you bring your children? Is it like 18 years, 21 years? What age can the children be included? Yeah. Costa, do you want to cover up that? or? So uh, there are two categories of children. Um, uh, there are actually three. Uh, first, the under 18s, uh, you include them easily in the application. Uh, they're just included and that's it. 18 to 23, they will look at whether these kids are students. Normally, full-time students are considered to be dependent on their parents, but you would need to provide evidence that they, um, a majority of their the funds that they uh, spend for food, clothing and accommodation are covered by yourself. And post 23, they can be your dependents only if these kids have a disability. But then there would be a problem of potentially them meeting the federal health requirement. Right, understood. And when the students basically come to Australia with their parents, are they classified here as an international student or a domestic student? Uh, and, oh, for that's a, education that's, that's purposes. A good, yeah, that's a very good question, Tejas. Yeah, so look, for the study purposes, every state has their own requirements. Uh, as far as I know, in uh, South Australia do um, treat you as a domestic student if you are a business visa holder. So you'll be getting uh, education at the schooling uh, at no cost uh, or minimum cost. For the university's point of view, then it will be a case-to-case -case basis. You'll have to uh, basically speak to the universities. How do they uh, treat individual applicants um, as a domestic or international graduate? Um, even if they can treat you as a domestic student, but then full fee paying student, then it will be still cheaper to study uh, as a domestic student compared to an international uh, student here. Yeah. Right, got it. And can you tell me what is the current estimated processing time for the 188 visa, please? Um, look, to be honest, the processing time is very uh, depending on where the applicant is uh, applying from and also the documents and the paperwork as well. The issue is we are moving from the paper-based application model to the online model. Um, there is uh, you know, a lot of mixed applications coming through as well, so it's average. Um, but as Neha mentioned, 60% goes to between 6 to 9 months, but then a lot of them are more than 12 months as well. So it's case to case, um, but what uh, we normally recommend the clients to do as well is once they have lodged the 188 visa or they want to lodge it, um, they can apply for the Vista visa for the business purpose, come on or apply onshore and then stay here if they want to, or they have a flexibility to come and go as they wish. So they can make their travel arrangements and also the investment arrangements accordingly. Right, okay. Now, uh, one more question. So let's suppose if a client is like 54 age when he has lost the visa, he has got a nomination, he has lost the visa, but um, he turns like 55 or 56 until they grant the visa, immigration. Um, that's, so that's what funny. criteria should the person go in case of what, 888 or 1888? <laughs> Yeah, so they would not have a problem because they need to meet the requirement uh, at the moment of the application, at the moment of the points test. When when right. it, you, you have been invited, that's it, fine. Doesn't matter that you turn older and for the 888, when they will consider you, that's why my story about 188 said 555 is the limit. Uh, but Neha's um, uh, table said 55 and over, which means that she's considered that the person would take three years to get from 188 to 888. So she will happily consider the 55 over requirement. Right. Okay. 
um and for example if any person comes to 188 visa and he doesn't like the state or he wants to get a business in a different state is there a change of state possible by any chance um look uh, we'll we'll try to make sure that you don't you don't have to change the state but then yes you have to be, <laughs> basically um, get a release from the state and then the new state will have to accept that release um so in case let's say if you applied for a different visa different state and you want to move to south australia then um that particular state will have to uh, release you and then um yeah we can consider uh, making your application with immigration sa uh, to accept you in for your future nomination for your 888 visa which is a permanent residency yep understood got it thank you that should be all again thank you for the questions any other questions today anyone Okay um so look everyone has got our contact details just uh, scroll um through this presentation it's going to be recorded you'll be able to watch it again and again as many times as you like hope you liked us today hope you liked our advice we'll continue next time we'll plan a new meeting we'll we'll decide when it's the start of the new financial year so we'll we're going to be up to our eyes um and work in at least beginning in mid July but end of July beginning of August is where we are will be starting to live more or less normal life and perhaps plan uh, a new date for a new event this time uh, the higher stakes higher net worth investor migration um and I'm very thankful to to everyone who's joined us today thank you Tejas thank you Neha thank you Immigration thank you. SA for your support um and thank you for our wonderful audience and all the audience who has enjoyed today but certainly is going to watch this video and thank you to Devna who arranged everything <laughs> thank you everyone thank you Devna bye bye thank you have everyone have a lovely weekend ahead